Oh, hello, denizens of the internet. Stop sneaking up on me like that. Well, I, I thought I would make this video because Open Core has been updated. The latest version has been released into the wild. And I thought, well, why not show you how I update Open Core? There's many different ways of updating Open Core, but this is the method that I have found that uh, to me is the easiest to use. You can follow it if you choose um, or not. It doesn't matter to me. Anyways, so OpenCore uh, version 0.6.1 or just 6.1 has now been released into the wild. And how do I go from 5.9 or 6.0 and uh, update OpenCore? Now, that being said, if you've got a working system and you're not updating the OS, then, uh, you know, leave, leave, leave it. There's no pressing reason to update to the latest version of OpenCore. Uh, most of uh, the updates have to do with future OS compatibility. Uh, so that's something that you should, you should check. Now, one of the things that if, let's say, you know, you've been running 5.9 and there have been security updates to Mojave or, or um, Catalina, uh, you can update uh, make those OS security updates without any kind of issues. The, the, the system is stable and, and you don't have to worry about updating OpenCore. But you know, now, for instance, we're moving from uh, Catalina to Big Sur. You have to check online the forums to see whether the existing version that, of OpenCore that you're running is compatible. And in this particular case, I think you need to be running minimum 6 or at least 6.1 to be able to move to uh, Big Sur, which is right now in public beta anyway. So um, there are people who are playing around with uh, Big Sur public beta. I'm not that crazy. Uh, I only work with released software and often uh, the next uh, version of the released software because I don't experiment on my living working computer. So you guys get to see the back of my head right now as I um, start my little demo of updating or how I update OpenCore. The first thing I do, I always build a fresh version of OpenCore. I know you don't have to. You can apply uh, the new OpenCore. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's several things that you need to be able to make sure that you have uh, copied into a previous version of OpenCore, but um, I just don't take any chances. I make a fresh one every single time and then copy and paste the properties of my existing open core into my fresh copy. So that's really what I do. Now I use a little tool called OC Gen X and it's very easy to use. I mean, obviously you know what your processor is. I've, am I running? The, yeah, I'm running. Okay. I didn't know whether I was recording my audio or not. <laughs> uh, Kaby Lake. So I know I've got a Kaby Lake processor. And then what kecks do I need? I know I know I know I need Lilu and Virtual SMC. Uh, my firmware updates, I can leave that. SM BIOS, I already know what that is because I have it on my previous um, copy of of uh, my bootloader, so I don't have to put it in here. Additional boot arguments, uh, this already puts in your basic boot arguments automatically. Uh, where are we here? Yes. So virtual SMC, text, I want uh, that, and super uh, SMC super IO. My graphics, I want whatever green, and I don't need any uh, boot arguments. Well, you, you might need this uh, Piker A boot, boot argument if you're writing, running the uh, AMD uh, 5700 XT GPU. Then you're going to have to add this argument again. Just type it in. It's pretty simple. Audio, yes, I want a Apple ALC and I want ALC ID equals one. I know that works on the KB Lake system, uh, but it might be 11. Uh, you might have to experiment. If you're building from fresh ethernet, I know our board has got the 2200 ethernet, the Athros USB. I'm not going to put in USB inject all. Wi-Fi, again, if I had an, an airport Wi-Fi chip, uh, a Bluetooth chip in the computer, uh, and it's not the OOB variety, you'd have to do some research on that, then you might have to play with these, um, these little patches. Uh, firmware drivers, we already went through that. SM BIOS, we did. 
And so uh, all I need to do is generate the EFI folder. So there's my EFI folder there. I can close that and you can see that it pretty much has everything that I need, the new OpenCore EFI and the new uh, Boot X64 uh, EFI. So these are the things that you would normally have had to uh, copy and paste manually. Uh, but here it just creates it. I know it's new. It's absolutely fresh. So I'm, I'm going in the opposite direction. So I'm updating uh, my the new uh, bootloader with old settings, the previously working settings. In this case, I have nothing in the ACPI folder. And there's two ways to work on that, uh, work with that. And my KEX are, are in here already. And one of the things I do just to make sure that I'm not confusing things, I'll just temporarily rename uh, OC61, uh, let's say. So that's my OC61 uh, because I want to pull the EFI folder off of this. So my install macOS Catalina USB stick, USB drive pops up. And I'm pulling up EFI Agent, which is one, of, which is my favorite way of loading the uh, EFI uh, directories of any any hard drive or any device. There, I hope you didn't see that. Like you're spying on me. And that will bring up the EFI directory there. And so that is the one from the stick. Uh, there's really, you know, I, I could futz with this one, but right now, uh, even that, I always like making a copy. Bad things can happen. So now I've got the copy of the EFI folder here. And I want to, okay, so you can see here that it's got the, the, um, AMLs, the ACPI files, copy these and paste them in here. And I'm going to take the config plist code from here. So you can see that I've already added, here's my zero and my one. I've already added those two items and this one, it has nothing in there. So th it's just easier to just, there you go. So that's, that's done. That's pretty easy. So this is from my old, this is, I'm going to my new here. Uh, there's maybe some uh, device properties that are in my old one that I want. So for instance, here's a device property. This is uh, to enable the internal uh, CPU to uh, the iGPU to be able to use as a helper to uh, render or play back video. So one of the nice things about uh, what Apple is doing is that it will use the your GPU for some heavy lifting, but it will still use the iGPU on your um, on your uh, on the Intel chip to also do some rendering. So one of the things I, I found that's kind of cool is that I'm running Intel Power Gadget. And if you take a look uh, at this, you can see all these little greens, you know, this like a graph, stripey thing. Obviously, the screen recorder, the QuickTime screen recorder, is using the iGPU to, to create uh, this screen recording, which is pretty cool. So this is one way to tell whether your iGPU is actually working when you've got everything installed. Just try a screen record in, in QuickTime and... I think this is this is neat. So I've got everything working with my system. So here's the um, the platform ID. Now now where did I get that? So uh, that I got from going to my get started with OpenCore. I'll go to KB Lake and then I'll go to device properties. And so for instance, it will show me what it is that I need to add. And it here's my option using uh, just the desktop iGPU for my, uh, for my monitor, then I would copy this value in. And if I'm using the desktop iGPU as a, uh, for computing tasks, then I just 
grab that. So uh, this is simple to do. It's kind of fun. And it's all beautifully explained and laid out uh, in your uh, in the, the open core install guide. So in this particular case, I don't have to worry about that. All I need to do, because I've already got this created, I just need to drag this and there you go. And then I need to get my platform ID. So this thing, this has got nothing there. There's not, not, nothing there in the generics. I'm just going to delete that. And then here I know that I've got my platform ID and I'm just going to add that there and I'm done. So I know I've got my settings already uh, set up here and I'm going to save that one. And so there you go. I'm basically, I'm basically done. Now, the one thing I do do is go to Open Core Slow Geek, and this is called Sanity Checker. And I'll go down here to my KB Lake, and I'm going to 0 0.6.1. And I'm just going to drag my config p list on here and it's going to do a sanity check and it will tell you which things um, perhaps need to be changed or updated or which things are are bad and in this case green check mark green check mark green check mark green check mark oh my god i have never ever gotten an all green check mark uh, test on this now on score on this. Now, that being said, this is not 100% foolproof, but it gives you some confidence that the the um, config plist that you've created is compatible. So this is all this is all pretty cool. So I'm done with this. I'm done with this. So I can confidently now copy that in there. Sometimes, I don't know whether this is legal or not in, in the world of <laughs> hackintoshing. You guys who are smarter than me will, will, will slap my wrists for doing this. But I'll, I'll keep the old one on there for one cycle. There's the brand new EFI. And then all I need to do is eject that and try it out in the new in my box and you know how to do that i'm not going to show you how to how to do that but that's that's it that's very simple i'll i'll put it into the computer try to boot from the efi from the usb drive uh, test it for a little while and if it works then i'll open up the efi folder uh, on the the existing machine and just copy delete the one that's there delete the efi that's there and then copy and paste the new one um, into it and then obviously test it. But uh, yeah, you can even leave your your USB stick in your computer for a while and, and you know, as it's booting from that brand new uh, EFI directory, you can give it a full you know, day's run just to give yourself some confidence that everything, everything is working and then make, make the substitute. So that's how I update my EFIs between the computers. I build a new one every single time and just copy uh, relevant files from the, uh, the 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 old one onto the new new version. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, don't ask me because I won't answer them. Talk to you later, denizens. So long. <laughs>